the last lesson um, I want to share with you, and this is one that I've kind of re-embraced, <laughs> is, and, you know, I used to do this a lot more than uh, I have in, in the past couple of years, but I've started to do it again, is to advocate for yourself. And what do I mean by that? When I first moved to uh, Parkland School Division, that's the last um, school division I worked with on contract for a, a, a long period of time. That's where I became a teacher, or, or I didn't become, that's where I started teaching, and then I became a vice principal, and a principal, and I worked in central office. I had a really great time there. There's a lot of great people uh, that I've met, and I'm still connected with uh, through that time. And on my very first day, I remember they had welcome new teachers. And it was really an incredible experience because when they were welcoming these new teachers, the superintendents were there. And like, not just the superintendent, but there's like associate superintendents, deputy superintendents, all these people. And I really appreciated that because I had spent several years in another school district. I never met the superintendent ever. They would not know me from a hole in the ground. Yet on my very first day at this school division, I met the superintendent, and I met all the associate superintendents, which was incredible to me. Um, it was just it tells you something about the culture of that place and, and why it really matters. And so there was one associate superintendent, and I kind of got the, the feeling that he was um, doing stuff with technology integration, things like this. And I was on a temporary contract. And I remember saying, I I kind of pulled him aside. I said, hey, can I talk to you for a second? He said, absolutely. I said, hey, I know that you're doing a lot of technology stuff. Just so you know, uh, I actually did a lot of stuff with technology, technology integration in um, my own, my last school district. And if there's any way that I can help you, if there's any w uh, services I could provide um, to the school division outside of my role as a teacher, I would love to do that. So please keep me in mind because I would love to kind of help if you need me to volunteer, to lead some sessions, things like that. And I think he was kind of shocked that I would just went on my way and like basically, you know, offered up my time. But I, I, had, I had committed that when I went there that I was going to recreate myself. And I think every time we have a new opportunity, we have an opportunity to recreate who we are, which kind of I'm talking about, to be honest with you, as I'm listening to myself share about this. When I moved here, I wanted to say like, what, what am I going to do different here that's going to create new opportunities for me that I wasn't doing in my last place? It's not about you just show up and all of a sudden you, you always do the same thing, but opportunities start hitting you. You have to rebuild and recreate yourself. And I, I did that and immediately, probably within a week, he had contacted me about something that they were wanting to do. And he said, he asked my advice, would I be able to lead it? And that initiative that I took to advocate for myself opened up doors so quickly in that space that I went from going there as kind of like, I'm going to give teaching one more year because I'm, I'm kind of sick of this to I became an assistant principal by, by the end of the year principal within two years and then central office after that because I was willing to put myself out there now in the last few years I I don't know what it is but I've I've kind of you know I I'm proud of the work that I've done but I kind of just you know just assumed people known but I've been more comfortable saying like hey you know I'm really proud of the work that I do I'd love to work with your district I'd love to do this and I've noticed that once I started doing that um, a lot more opportunities started opening up for me. And it wasn't that I'm saying I'm the best, <laughs> everyone else is worse than me or like that. But I think sometimes um, we just assume people know our strengths, our passions, the gifts that we can bring. And then they don't call on us. And it's like, sometimes you got to put the idea in your head. And I know this, that um, not everyone will advocate for you. Some people will, some people won't. But I think you, we always have to learn to advocate for ourselves. This is something that, you know, some adults get really weird about, and that's fine. Get weird about it. I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. Because if you get weird about it, would you get weird about saying that to my daughter? Because if you, if, you, if you would, I don't want you around my kid. I don't want you saying, no, 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 like just cower and, you know, hope for the best. I watch educators do this all the time, telling their kids they need to, you know, 
champion themselves and be an advocate and share their voice of the world. But then I watch a lot of those same educators complain when adults do that. And what, once we hit a certain age, we, sh we shouldn't do that anymore. And so I've, I, I just kind of, you know, when I say don't care, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I, I don't care because I think part of it is the reason I kind of maybe, you know, pulled back a little bit. It was because I was so concerned about people that were crapping on people and like, oh, you're so self-promotional and not to me, but to other people. And then a lot of times uh, other people see that and then they, they lessen themselves because they're so scared of being criticized. They're so scared of doing that. And here's the deal. People will criticize you if you're doing great things. That will happen because, not necessarily because they have a valid criticism, but sometimes it makes them feel insecure. And I've seen this with teachers. I've, I've worked with teachers who have said this to me. I'm a little bit nervous about trying this new thing because if it works, it's going to make the teacher across the hall feel bad. And I'm like, who cares? If you're helping kids, if you're doing something great, do not hold yourself back because you're, you're worried it's going to make someone else feel insecure. It is more on them to elevate themselves than it is on you to lower your, your self expectations. That to me is really important. We do this all the time. And so I've just kind of said, Hey, I'm going to advocate for myself. I believe in the work that I do. I believe in myself. And it's not that I don't have faults. Of course I do just like everyone else, but we share the same thing with our kids. We share the same things with the people that we appreciate. So we have to share that with ourselves. So 